Hello and welcome to another screencast uh, in which we look at um, layout and design uh, techniques. This is going to be about a series of things you can do in Photoshop to use pictures, particularly pictures of people, in interesting ways to give some original originality to your designs. I think if there's one thing we've learned from Simon in his brief uh, so far, it's that he's less interested in the technical details of the course and more about the case studies and the individual students. So uh, to have a go at a completely different design from what you've done before, um, we'd need to tear up what you've done and do something that really emphasises the person that's in your case study. So that obviously means doing a decent photo of them. I'm going to show you a few things you can do that will um, produce interesting pictures and still fit within the layout and within the grid to give it that underlying structure. Uh, first one is uh, where you've taken a picture of your case study and there's a lot of background stuff going on. This isn't for the ones where you've isolated them on, on, on a plain background or on white. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pull in a photo, uh, this is another free stock image, a stock library photo uh, to, to, to work on. Um, lovely picture but it's got a problem if you're going to run text on it in that the girl is slap bang in the middle where you'd want to put the text and the background is also a little bit rough. So. Uh, and and you, know, you might imagine that this instead she's a I don't know, carpenter carrying a bloody great plank up there and you've got bits of workshop in the background. So first things first, let's cut it, crop it rather. Um, always if you've got someone off on the side of the page, um, you create visual interest because the person wants to follow their eyes, the reader wants to follow their eyes, but you do really want them to be looking inward. So instead of cropping it here, where she looks out of the page, I'm going to crop it around here so that this page of ours, she's um, looking into it. And we've got all this space here where um, text can go. But obviously it's got uh, background stuff on it and it's going to be quite difficult to read any text that's put on there. So what I suggest um, is that uh, you uh, blank out that and make it solid. Now. Unfortunately, the edge of the screencast, um, it won't pick this up, but uh, there's a row of buttons off on the bottom on Photoshop, and one of them says add a mask. And just click on that, and um, give yourself a mask that when you paint over it, will create transparency. And also, uh, let's get another layer in, but underneath. In that layer, we're going to paint uh, or flood fill a colour that's broadly similar to the background here. So uh, pick it with the eyedropper. This looks like a good neutrally bit of it. Um, switch to that layer. Paint bucket. Flood it. And it's there where we hide that. And then we simply put a gradient in here and that gradient will create transparency and let that background colour show through. So under the paint bucket we've got gradient and if we draw a line here the background shows through. That wasn't enough of a line so let's start it here and go to there. Right, and there you go. You can put all the text in the world on there and it's legible and you've still got this great photo of your, of, of your case study. Um, so that's the first thing you can do. Obviously you export this from Photoshop and you put it straight into InDesign. Um, and you've got a great big bold photo of your student case study and loads of space for text. So that's, that's option number one. Now, I'm going to pause this because I feel a sneeze coming on. Oof, okay, right, back in the game. Um, next one I'm going to show is something that's based a little bit on what um, the college is doing with some of its current marketing materials switch to a browser. This design here where they've taken bits of individual photos that are on colours. Um, not necessarily suggesting you do exactly like this but it's useful to know that some of the techniques involved in doing it. So first things first I'm going to find a suitable photo from my collection down here. I've got one in mind but I can't find it.
There we go. Right, we'll have him. And what we're going to do is we are going to put that colour effect on that you see in the college marketing materials. First thing you need to do is um, make him uh, black and white. We don't want the colour that we're, going to, that we're going to tint it with disrupted by the flesh tones or the jeans or whatever. Um, if you just change the colour um, so under image mode to um, grayscale for example, then you change it for the whole image and every layer and you don't want that. So what you do instead is image adjustments and down here desaturate. And that takes the colour out of this layer and when you put other layers on they still have colour. Um, but we've still got a lot of grey in there, the contrast across the face isn't huge um, and that makes an effect, any effect really, harder to work with. So we need to increase the contrast um, and there's a more subtle way of doing that than just using the contrast controls and um, you go image, adjustment and then levels which is the second one, levels and this controls um, the, the black and the white in the picture um, and if you play around with these sliders you can get a variety of different balances between the dark and the light um, I'm going to suggest you leave that on one and you go with 60 there and you go with something like 195 there and you can see immediately um, how you've got much more contrast and the image is going to be easier to work with um, and then the simplest thing you can do with it is then just put in another layer pick an obscenely bright colour for the layer and flood fill it and finally change it to multiply and you've got something which if you chop it up becomes oh, it's a close safari but becomes like the, the 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 college logo and all you need to do is save this once and then flood it with blue and save it a second time and flood it with green and save it a third time and you've got three different colors and three different versions and you can just stack them one on top of the other um, or do anything you like with them and you've got something that, that's quite um, visually striking so that's the second thing if you but we can go further than that if you remember the poster that's on the wall, the yellow poster of the engineering student, Paige Tennyson, um, with that, there's, there's a repeated dot pattern, which um, is sometimes referred to as half-toning, and those of you who studied at GCSE Art and maybe did Pop Art and Roy Lichtenstein will recognise the style from that. We, we can do that as well. Um, I'll keep this guy on. Um, we have some options of what we can do and they come under filter which is in the top menu which doesn't show on here but you've got file edit image layer type select filter and if we go to pixelate and color half tone there's a few things we can do with that one is just to completely cover the image which looks very weird but also has quite a bit of potential because if we put on another one of these layers that lets us put transparency in and just paint a bit of black or white on there we can have some dots that are part of the pattern that's not worked as well as I'd hoped but that's because I was being a bit on the quick side we, we, yeah, we can just keep enough of these dots going in on the edge to make an interesting visual effect without disrupting the picture too much. So that's uh, the first option that's available to us. Get rid of that. Yeah. And that becomes, if you imagine it in yellow and black, the, the Paige Tennyson poster instead of, the, instead of what we've got here. Um, but we can actually do it the other way around as well. Let me just get rid of this, this, this layer. Delete, there we go, delete the layer mask. We swap them around. I need to get rid of the dots as well. Okay. 
I have to do quite a few step backwards here. Alright, sort these layers round. Oh, hang on, that's this background, isn't it? And put the multiply on the new top one. Um, if we put the filter pixelate color half tone on the layer with the photo instead and make this a fairly low number like four it's not the background that gets the dots it's the picture if I put this up to 100% you can see and again this is something that could work quite well for you uh, you, you might decide to just take a circle from there, cut the rest out, and put that in as an interesting shape that you can run text around. Um, that would be one thing you could do. And of course there are other filters you can play with as well, under the under this pixelate menu, a few more. They all do things to the pictures, they all do interesting things to the image. And if what you want to do is try and show some flair and some creativity uh, in order to hit the distinction level on the brief, you could do a lot worse than trash most of your writing stick just to your case study quotes and do something funky with the picture and colors and layers and maybe you know a bit of the college college branding with the different color layers perhaps um, and just experiment if you've already got a merit in the bank for criteria four you're not going to make it worse and you might make it better and we're at the end of the term and just just give it a go and see if it works and if it doesn't not lost anything and if it does it could look stunning um, not a lot more to add than that